So now I'm going to start to block in the shoulder area. Just going to be out the way of the um, bright yellowy background I'm going to put in, so I'm not too worried about it there being, uh, you know, dust around. And this pastel paper holds the pastel very, very well, so there's not much um, pastel dust around, even working it flat like this. Although I should imagine it would be much easier on my back if I used it upright, like I would normally with painting, but I do get a bit of video with my head out of the way most of the time by shooting this video looking directly down and working flat. So same process again, going in that fur direction. It's quite long fur here, so I'm using longer strokes to block in. And what I'm going to do is fill all this in, blend it again, just like you saw me do on the head. Now this is what I love with pastel, you can block it in so quickly. I could have used pans, see, so I could, I could use the sticks to block in. I can use pans just as I did with the head and they're even quicker and that bit smoother. So don't think you've got to have everything. You've got to have every single color that there is made for pastels out there to get it to work. You've got to have every single pencil, every pan pastel. It's not like that. Nice thing about the, the um, medium with pastels, if you want to keep adding colors and you enjoy collecting colors, that's great. If you've got the uh, extra cash, that's fine, because that's part of the hobby as well. But if all you want to do is keep your supplies to a minimum, then you know you can really do a lot with Conti sticks, a set of um, Carbothello's, pastel matte paper. You can do a lot with that, especially if you're just doing portraits, and just you know even leave the background, the pastel matte color. I see lots of people do that. Or just get yourself some soft pastels, perhaps a few pans in blues and greens, because that's a, you know your usual background colors. So blending in now, pushing the pastel into the paper, but blending in the direction of the fur. So now I'm adding some more of the Payne's Gray adding some white into it as well just to give that sheen and that's giving the impression of the light coming down striking the fur on top so we get the darker shadowy layers underneath where the light is not getting to the lighter layers on top that's going to be a fantastic ground then ready for my pencils and the pencil work will happen really quickly because this is all underneath so we change direction because this is coming up from the arm going towards the hand I'm going to blend it in pushing it in again notice how little dust there is people are afraid with pastels they think there's going to be dust and dirt and things everywhere keep a little tissue or rag on your lap so you can wipe your fingers every now and again but other than that there's not a great deal of uh, dust and dirt I darken in the shoulder now with my dark pastel stick Okay, so now all that's blended in nicely, coming back in with the sticks and adding more darks in there. Building up that layer, remember what I say about, you know, creating depth by building layer upon layer. So the dark area gave me a nice grounding to work upon. And I'm leaving some of that visible, so I'm not uh, covering it all up. 
this area by here is the neck area so it's really dark there's not much fur at all on there if any so it's got a bit of a sharp edge as it meets the background right where I am now you see how I'm doing more twisty strokes because there's a certain flow and wave to the hair on some parts of the shoulder it's quite long so I'm doing that as well it's quite a quick process doing this fur in pastel much much quicker than I would be able to do it in oils and absolutely substantially quicker than I'd be able to do it in colored pencil and if I did it in acrylics I wouldn't be able to blend it well so that's why I almost always do things with um, alkyd oils or pastels or other blendable mediums like charcoals so all that's left to do here is just to carry on the way I'm doing it and fill this last bit in so just easily put in on the markings pastel pencil I'm very very lightly blending there very lightly barely touching it just softening slightly then I come in with the harsher harder strokes later on okay back to the drawing you can see it I'm just layering and layering so I've just been talking and hopefully you've been just watching as I'm building one layer on the next got gradually going lighter and lighter so once again I'll I'll speed up the sections where it's more repetitive so we can spend a lot more time on the more detailed things the important thing to see here though before I speed up is how I'm not filling in every area of the underdrawing and that I'm really going in the direction of the fur growth and also I'm matching the length of my strokes to the length of the fur that I'm seeing on the reference So still building up those layers, still going in that direction. And don't forget, if you've got any ideas of what you'd like me to draw or paint next to add to my tutorial site, drop me a line or you know join my Facebook page and contact me on there or my Instagram. And I always try to do my best if I get lots of uh, comments with one subject, or perhaps if there's a subject that I particularly find interesting as well that you mention could be good somebody suggested doing insects you know those really iridescent insects that could be a really interesting thing to do with pastels because it's nice and easy to blend they usually got a hard shell and they're shiny and with pastels I can get more vibrancy much more vibrancy than I can with oils I think it's because the pigments are that much more pure less binders in there so I gotta be cautious around the top of the shoulder section because the fur goes in all different directions and then it starts to flow down as I come down the shoulder top. But in this um, top section, it starts to go backwards, straight up, forwards. You need to really observe that reference to get that right. It hasn't gotta be perfect. Don't, you know, when you go to detailed subjects such as this, don't go thinking you've got to get every individual hair in the right place because then it will just look fake but get the general idea in your head and um, try and recreate that so building up the tones the highlights going in there now wiggly lines going in because the fur is is that shape it's not all straight so I'm repeating a lot of the same things but you know it 
it deserves to be repeated because when I'm doing my critiques, it's the things that I get seen more often than not. So in general, that's what people are going to be having trouble with. So a little bit whiter down the bottom. I haven't got to change pencils, you notice, just to get a lighter tone. I'm just pushing that slight bit harder. I don't um, sharpen my pencils that often either. I twirl, twirl them as I'm, um, perhaps either as I'm doing it or after every couple of strokes I'll turn it. Otherwise you just get a flat point on the pencil by twirling it more. You um, sharpen it all the way around so it lasts that much longer. So I switched over now to a, a very light pencil. And I'm really starting to, you know, increase the contrast now. So I'm going really light, especially on this area where there's very um, rough looking individual haze or coarse haze. So I'm making sure my pencil's quite sharp. So I don't want to go leaving thick lines here. The underwork is done, so I know I'm creating that depth that I've been talking about so much, which is critical. So really bright now. That's my white pencil. I'm pushing up to get the deeper marks in there because that, that tooth is filling up. So pushing upwards on the paper rather than pulling down most of the time. And then we've got some more distinctive haze down here. And this is where all that underwork really pays off now. I haven't got to worry about the dark haze and the dark fur underneath. They're already in place. This is absolutely the icing on the cake. So it's the most exciting part for me of the drawing. Same with the painting. I love that initial blocking in stage where you, you know, you things develop really quickly. And then I love the finishing part. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so, packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, is on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well and we've just designed a brand new companion website for it so if you've joined other patrons and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we've got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects, I've got some of those too. I've got 900 plus on my website, wildlifeart-online.com. And they will be copyright free for you. So you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.